If you're buying a new gravel bike in 2024, this is the right video for you. I've got 10 amazing bikes to share with you today that I have ridden and tested here at Just Ride Bikes. And these are bikes I happily recommend and would personally buy with my own money. First up, we have the brand new redesigned Canyon Grail, which is a top pick if you are going gravel racing. It's lightweight, very responsive handling, and aerodynamic as well. And when I rode it, exceedingly quick in all situations, both on the road and in gravel and on a single track. It's a bike that excels everywhere. Comfort is also good too, so it won't beat you up on a long ride. And the new handlebar that replaces the old hover handlebar is a fantastic design. Great ergonomics with back sweep, nice flared drops, a really comfy shape that does promote a nice aero position when you are racing flat out. And then we have the novel gear groove, their system for mounting accessories to the handlebar. And the frame is full of aero features that they borrow from their road bikes. Indeed, it looks like a road bike from a distance with an aero seat tube, down tube and fork blade. And then we have the very clever internal frame storage, which is fantastic if you're racing. Keeps your pockets free for extra gels and food, no saddlebag, get dirty, and all your spare parts, your tube and pump are stored away in the frame, no rattling, no dirt, just fantastic. And then the icing on the cake is the bag they designed to be aerodynamic and provide more space for extra gels and things you need when you're gravel racing. And then being Canyon, the value for money is good with CFR, CFSLX and CFSL trims to choose from, so there's a Canyon Grail for most budgets. The MV Mog is one of the fastest gravel bikes I've ever tested. It's aerodynamic, it's lightweight, and it's very stiff where it needs to be, but comfort is also pretty good too. And the way the bike rides is just supreme. It's fast, it's supple over rough tracks, great handling, not too fast, not too slow. Works well as a road bike, a cross bike, and of course a gravel race bike. And while it's a fast bike and definitely suited to racing, there are some nice bike packing features on the fork, the top tube and mud guard mounts as well. So quite a versatile option and can be used for bike packing as I found out earlier this year. Now we have MV's own two piece aero handlebar stem, which compared to a Canyon allows you to adjust the stem length and the handlebar width as you need, not tied into a one piece system. And like the Canyon, we have internal frame storage in the down tube with a compartment to store your inner tube, gas canister, and a multi-tool. So very neat and a great thing for gravel racing. The 3 t Explorer was the original gravel aero bike at a time when gravel was definitely in its infancy. But the latest Race Max is a fantastic high-speed, fast over long distance gravel race bike. We have these massive aero profiles on the fork, the down tube, and the seat tube, and it goes like the clappers really is a very fast bike indeed. The only downside to the Race Max is it's definitely one of the firmer bikes here. The comfort isn't the best, not as smooth as the MV Mog or the Canyon Grail, but fits a wide tire and can mitigate that to some extent. And 3T have expanded its range of models and there's now a new Extrema Italia, which takes the DNA of the Race Max and boosts tire clearance to make it the biggest in class. And the bigger tire clearance on this new bike coupled with the same distinctive aerodynamics makes it a bike that offers unrivaled speed, control, and capability when riding off-road over very tough and rough trails. This new Extrema Italia also has the UDH dropout system from SRAM, so you fit their T-type transmission for the ultimate state-of-the-art mullet setup, and it would take a dropper seat post as well if you are embarking on any very rough trails. The Vitus Venom Evo GR is definitely a bike to consider if you are going racing. When I rode this bike, I was really impressed with how capable it is off-road. Definitely a firmer, faster riding bike, quite agile steering, but very responsive when you're attacking and really putting a lot of power through the cranks and a nice stiff frame that doesn't flex when you are putting the power out. And it's a bike that I found can be both a road bike with slick tires and also a very fast gravel bike with some chunky knobby tires. And because Vitus is a direct sales brand, part of the wiggle and chain reaction cycles, the value for money is really good too. My final offering in this roundup of gravel race bikes is a Scott Addict Gravel. They took the name 
and the general aero frame features of their Addict road bike and morphed it into a gravel bike, but one with a chunkier frame appearance and space for up to 45 mil wide tires. And the bike definitely delivers lots of speed, no issue with going fast on a bike at all. And the handling that works well on smoother gravel, maybe not as at home in twisty single track, but on flat out fast gravel tracks, the handling is on point. And it's a very modern looking bike as well, with full internal routing and some very nice details. In particular, the tiny weight saving seat clamp, which I absolutely love. So the Scott Addict Gravel is definitely worth checking out. It's a bike that often gets overlooked compared to the more popular options in the category, but it's definitely a bike that lives up to its name and gives great speed and great handling and lightweight as well. Now let's turn our attention to bike packing adventure gravel bikes and we'll start with the Giant Revolt. The Giant is a fantastic option for gravel riding. You can race it, it's definitely not a slow bike, but it has all the features, comfort and capability I want for a bike packing adventure ride. So a space for up to 50 mil plus tires with adjustable rear dropouts, loads of comfort for a defuse seat post and handlebar, especially if it's carbon fiber. And we've got bike packing mounts on the fork, the top tube, you fit mug guards as well. So very versatile, very flexible bike indeed. And the geometry gives a nice relaxed stance on the road and on the gravel. It's not a lazy bike, but definitely slower handling than a race bike, but it's nice and assured and will definitely look after you on a long distance bike packing event when you're tired and fatigued. And being giant, the value for money is fantastic as well. With a choice of carbon fiber models, and aluminium frame options as well. You get two by, one by, Shimano, SRAM, plenty of options in the giant range. The brand new Merida Silex is definitely an interesting option and shows what a big dose of mountain bike geometry inspiration does to a drop bar gravel bike. We have a much higher front end, a much slacker head angle and a longer wheelbase compared to the more road bike gravel race bikes earlier in the video. And that corresponds to amazing handling so sure-footed and so planted and so capable when you're riding down rough trails. You take a bike down mountain bike trails and they won't hold you back at all. And when you go bike packing, where you typically, in my experience, encounter trails that are much more technical, much rougher and much harder riding than the usually well-groomed gravel at any gravel race in the US, it's a bike that will not hold you back at all. And in fact, urge you to go faster than you would on any other gravel race bike. And being Merida, the value for money is always really good too, unless you're watching in the US where Merida aren't available, unfortunately, but here in the UK and Europe, they are a good choice. Not the sexiest or the most appealing, but definitely good value for money and a very sensible option. Comfort is definitely a priority when bike packing and adventure riding in my experience and a specialized Diverge is one of the smoothest riding gravel bikes I've ever tested. And there are two versions. There's the original with the Future Shock up front, or there's a new STR with a Future Shock in the back to ride front and rear compliance. But whichever you choose, get a bike that's well designed for bike packing adventure riding. The space for 47 mil wide tires, loads of mounts for bags, racks, and so on. Down tube storage, for all your snacks and spare tools, and a geometry that just works brilliantly when you're riding off-road. The only downside to buying a Specialized is the prices are often higher than brands like Merida and Giant. Most of the bikes in the video so far have been carbon fiber, but there are options if you don't want carbon, like aluminum. And the Mason Boker is a great example of aluminum done to another level. It really is a fine looking bike, packed full of amazing details, and really is a showcase for how good aluminum can be. Not only in looks, but also in ride quality as well. It's a fantastic riding bike. Definitely a sprightly character, very responsive, perhaps not the smoothest, but when you fit a big chunky mountain bike tire, there's plenty of smoothness and comfort over rough tracks. And it's well equipped for bike packing, space for big tires, mud guard mounts, mounts on a fork, a frame for bags and racks and so on and a geometry that gives you that assured manner when you're riding off-road, fully laden with all your survival equipment for a few days away from home. Another non-carbon option is the Fairlight Sakan, which I personally own. 
a Reynolds 853 steel tube bike that looks amazing, packed full of details and rides extremely well too. And tire clearance on a Sakan is very generous, one of the best in the class. And there are options to fit all sorts of racks, bags, cages, diamond lights as well. It's a very versatile, very adaptable bike. And my favorite feature about Fairlight is the fact they offer two stack heights for each frame size. So choose a 56, which I ride, and you have a regular head tube or a tall head tube. The sort of customization that most mainstream bike brands don't offer. And short of going full custom, it's a really nice detail to get the right size bike that actually fits you perfectly. And while steel will never be as light as carbon fiber, it's definitely not a heavy frame, and you can get a decent weight build if you are careful with the components you choose. But the ride quality, the compliance, the smoothness, more than make up for that weight penalty. These materials offer so much more than the performance you get from a carbon bike. So those are some of the best gravel bikes I recommend in 2024. But there are loads more you could consider as well, and you can let me know what I've missed by leaving a comment down below. But if you see my full archive of gravel bike reviews, then watch the playlist right up here. There are loads more to consider as well. I could have made a video 10, 20 or 30 bikes, but I had to narrow it down to keep it fairly short. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.